Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. If you've been following this channel, then you know that it's pretty much about whatever I have going on that week. It might be about motorcycles or toolboxes or auto mowers or whatever. You know, it doesn't follow the standard, uh, oh, I don't know, everyone gives advice on how to be successful on YouTube and you got to find your niche and just follow that and, yeah. I want this to be fun. If it isn't fun to do, then it ain't worth doing because I'm certainly not making any money at it. So anyway, we're gonna. Well, before I get into that, take a look at this. This is June in Wisconsin for crying out loud. Uh, this is the coolest it's been all day. Take yeah, take precautions. I got home from work and I ran through the shower. How's that for a precaution? Anyway, what I'm going to do is start showing some videos uh, of, of um, some of my workload at work. So I'll have a camera mounted above the bench and you'll just see what I'm working on. I'm not using any audio from work because uh, of various reasons. There's music playing in the background, and there's F-bombs are dropping, and there's other people's privacy, what have you. So for the most part, I'm going to dub audio in after the fact. Uh, with that said, let's, take a, let's get started on uh, my first edition of, what do you want to call it, From Over the Bench. How about, uh, I don't know, I got nothing. Husqvarna 120i 40 volt battery powered chainsaw. Customer complaint, the battery's dead and won't recharge. So what we're gonna do here is, we're gonna grab a known good battery, throw it in a saw and just see if the saw works. It works on high speed eco mode so we're good to go now what happens is on some of these units is the controller board inside goes bad and it continually drains on the battery if the battery's left in the saw so to test that we're gonna take a known good battery get the voltage here at 40.6 volts we're gonna put it in the saw and we're gonna let it sit for 24 hours just like that We'll come back to it tomorrow and we'll take another reading. Just for giggles, we're going to test the old battery and see if there's any juice in it at all. And there ain't much. I think it was 6.7 volts. So it's tomorrow. Pop the battery out and we're going to get a voltage reading on it and see where we're at. The accepted range is less than 0.3 to 0.5 volts. Let's see where we end up. 40.2, so that's 4 tenths of a volt. That puts us in the range of she's foobard. So the next step is to replace the controller. Now. This problem has affected models from 2016 to 2018 up to serial number 2018-4800001. Most of those units have been sold and are out of warranty. This one's not. This one's still covered. So we're, uh, we're kind of kicking ass here and moving real fast. we got a flat rate job going on. If this was your unit and it's out of warranty and you wanted to replace the controller, I mean, you can follow along. It's really easy to do. But I would warn you that the controller is $150 and the whole saw bundle with the battery and the charger is what, 260 or 280 somewhere in there? So I can't seem to get this side cover off. Right off the bat, we're failing. I don't know what's going on, and then it's like, whoops, there's a sticker holding it together. So we'll get our handy-dandy razor blade out there and give it a slice. 
and uh, just like that, bam, she comes apart. Don't worry about pulling that top lid, there's nothing connected to it. So this is our battery tray right here. And we're gonna pull that out first. Disconnect this ribbon from the controller board. And uh, just grab that thing and yank it out of there, man. There you go. So once you got it clear enough that you can get a screwdriver on the bottom of the, this is the uh, the connector that the battery actually plugs into, passes through the battery tray right here. So we just get that out of the way. Here's our new controller and a part number on it. And uh, we'll kind of lay it out here so you can see what we got. So this controller problem also applies to the uh, 115i HD 45 and 55 hedge trimmers. Again, if it's covered, if it's in the warranty period, this is covered if a tech determines that the controller board is bad. That block right there, uh, take note of how tight the screws are on it because I've seen those blocks melted before. I'm just pointing to a track that that blue wire runs through and we'll, when we put it back together we'll make sure we get the wire in there. <clears throat> that wire right there is coming off of the chain brake switch. So there's a mechanical brake and an electric switch. Disconnect the trigger switch. I've had to replace a couple of these triggers. One or two. And then we'll disconnect the main power wires from the junction block. So the question is, do I recommend you do this repair? Well, really the answer is no, unless you're going to have them, the saw stored in a place where you always want the battery in it, like uh, mounted on a tractor or in your truck or Jeep ready to go. Otherwise, just take the battery out and uh, it won't die. So again, it's pretty simple deal. I mean, if the wires are still on the other side of the block, just match the colors up. Make sure the connections are tight. I don't know why this is taking this guy so long. Look at that tangled web we weave. We get it all sorted out. The blue wire crumbs comes across the bottom of the control board. It should go underneath those main power wires there. I think we'll get around to routing it the right way. There we go. She's underneath the, the main power wires. And if you ever get confused, just start poking at it with a screwdriver. It looks like it's working for me. So. We'll plug the blue wires into the chain brake switch. And then we'll route them as best we can into the provided channel. And then we'll lay the junction block over the top. That'll hold those blue wires in place. There's just one screw holding this down. Hook up our trigger switch and then just for giggles we'll look at the function of the switch of the trigger and make sure it's working right looks good to me now here's our battery box if you see the I'm putting in that that power plug right now in the bottom of it that the battery plugs into but you see that long tube that's kinda on the, well, it'd be on the bottom side of that block. It's a water drain tube, and that's there's a recess in the bottom of the saw that that fits into. So you got to kind of line that up and plug it in the main ribbon into the 
controller that main ribbon comes from the keypad switches and that hole right there I'm pointing to lines up on a pin that's on the bottom half and then the next thing I was pointing to there was where that drain tube goes so once you get it all lined up uh, it just kinda falls together like that and then the ribbon gets tucked in behind uh, the plastic slot there and that black wire kinda gets tucked in out of the way so that the trigger mechanism doesn't rub against it so you just kinda jam it in there here I'm just double checking my work and it looks like we're ready to put the cover on snap just that easy so we'll run these screws in and uh, I think this video before I edit it was 17 minutes long here on this actual swapping the controller so whatever figure half an hour for your first time it should be plenty of time we'll get the handle on there T20 for all the screws except for the two that hold the handle on those are T25s I just love using a snap-on uh, driver it works really good for me With the clutch on there I can back it off for plastic screws so we'll test it test was the chain brake function on this. I tested it later and it worked fine. There you go. Hey, I want to thank you for watching. Later.